Kitchener Center is located on the traditional territory of the Haudenosaunee, Anishinaabe, and Neutral Indigenous peoples. It's also on the Haldeman Tract, land that was promised to the Six Nations of the Grand River. Haudenosaunee and Anishinaabe called this dish with one spoon territory. Everyone made sure that the dish would never be empty by taking care of the land and all of the living beings on it. This advanced diplomacy continued until settlers colonized their lands, over 99.7% of Indigenous territory over 400 years. Settlers even took Indigenous territory that was given back from the colonial state to them. After the Haudenosaunee Six Nations of the Grand River fought for the British in the American Revolutionary War, Sir Frederick Haldeman granted them 10 kilometers of land on either side of the Grand River, now referred to as the Haldeman Tract. Of the entire Haldeman land tract promised to the Six Nations, quote, which them and their posterity are to enjoy forever, they currently control less than 5%. The dispossession of land is never peaceful. The way these lands were taken was genocide, stealing children from their homes and communities, erasing languages and cultures, government neglect and criminalization, medical racism and abuse, cultural racism and appropriation, and so much more. This is how colonization works across the world, and Canada is a colonial country. Land declarations need action. As settlers, we pledge to follow the lead of Indigenous peoples in our path to reconciliation, to challenge other settlers to unlearn colonial and racist ways of thought, to support the return of land back into Indigenous stewardship across this country, and to hold Canada to account for its genocide against Indigenous peoples. We stand in solidarity with Indigenous peoples in Canada and across the world in their struggles for justice, freedom, and self-determination. Hello, everybody. Um, welcome from my unfortunately really dark apartment because I have no power right now. Um, and I am tethered, so hopefully we retain battery, but so many you know, of you made time to come today, so we don't reschedule, we just go with it here. So thank you so much for joining us. Um, that was the land declaration. We wanted to um, you know, try and, and do something um, with a little bit more intent around it, but um, uh, thank you so much for, for joining us um, in this mix of recorded and, and live uh, events. So our next recorded, uh, and thankfully it's recorded because this was meant to be outside and that would have been, um, you know, not a great scene. So please, please um, watch this wonderful music video by a local Kitchener Waterloo band, Onion Honey, a folk band, and they're playing just one of my favorite songs. So I'm so excited for everyone to hear our campaign music video. With every bubble she 
love that song so much. And Esther Wheaton, who is um, the the singer of Onion Honey, uh, just love her voice. And that's only two members of them. They are a unit and a partnership. And um, I, I can't wait till we can see them back together live as a whole band. Because if you haven't seen them playing at the Grand Trunk, um, you haven't really experienced just some of the best DTK nights have to offer. So um, because this is a launch event and because the idea is to, you know, introduce me to this, you know, the conversation, this campaign, um, we wanted to, you know, ask somebody who knows me and who's known, who's known me for a while to have a, you know, have a conversation with me, maybe um, pull some nuggets of wisdom out of me if possible. Uh, so I was wondering if we have Aaron Francis in the room that we can um, welcome him into this as a panelist. Hello. <laughs> oh, hello. Do you have power? <laughs> I do. I do. I think maybe it might have hit me a little first because after you messaged me, I had just got my car back. So yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. We're still waiting. Um, you know, fingers crossed there will be a moment, but you know, at least we aren't, you know, at least our plan of doing this live outside, <laughs> we didn't go with plan A because True. we saw the risk. I, I think back to when we did the interview earlier today and it, how hot it was and now it's kind of a 180, but. Yeah, it's still pretty up. hot in here. I'm like trying uh, not to, I'm trying to keep my composure. I, I subtly put my hair back up in a ponytail while the music video was, was playing. Um, so. We have just a clip from our conversation today. It was really long. We're going to keep releasing parts of it. Uh, but there was one part right after we were at Aaron uh, saved us from a, a lawnmower that was right in the in the audio of the shot. And so um, we had a really great kind of conversation when when you kind of sat back down and 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 we just launched into a lot of stuff and, and, and it flowed really naturally. So let's just share that part today with everybody okay. and we can kind of. Um, we can we can come back in when when they see in that part. Sounds good. Thanks. So maybe we can, we yeah. can just use everything. Yeah, we're, we you're can, still recording. Yeah, we're still recording because I just didn't want to have to deal with stopping everything and starting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, so what, what were we? We were okay. So there was that Ottawa question, and we were talking about um, like. I think we're getting kind of in the weeds, so maybe we can, do you know what I mean? Like we were talking about, I was talking about like how the global systems of oppression are all like no, interconnected. Okay, but, okay. Um, you said something is, about generational policy making yeah. and Gen I like yeah. that. Well, and then, generational policy, well, how are you going to make a, like a, this whole like three year, four year cycle, five year, you know, investments. Yes. Good what point. happens is that a new government, ha and so every single election, you have to defend that. Mm -hmm. Every single election, what gains were made the last time mm -hmm. are refought, right? Right. But we have seen with the NDP the ability to create policies that have generational impact. True. Yeah, Within right? other, yeah. Um, for example, like, like health. And healthcare is the big one. But, you know, healthcare is not, we're not done. Like the NDP, I wish. How so? Well, I mean, if you go to the doctor and you're like you or sorry can you go to the dentist and get you know get get what you need done and right. and be able to you know if you get hit in the face are you paying out of pocket for that right. or is that covered what about your eyesight mm -hmm. uh what about your mental health right what about you know huge yeah. huge so right now what we have is emergency care we have um you know, general care um, but we don't really cover the head, the teeth, the eyes, the brain. We right. don't really kind of. We talked about band-aid solutions and yeah. talking about interconnectedness and holistic yeah. approaches. Yeah. How can you truly have health without the health of the mouth and health of the mind? And it's and I and well, let's talk about class. Like uh, one of the hardest um, ways for people sometimes um, who have bad teeth because. If you can't afford to like go to the dentist often and you get into a situation where you don't have you know the you know you need a tooth kind of capped or you're missing one or like fat teeth but if you need that work done mm -hmm. you are limited in even just the jobs you can apply for mm -hmm. right the amount of times you need to go to a different place and kind of 
you know, maybe, maybe you know, people will be judging you and, and you are, you know, there are so many different barriers. Just if you can't um, uh, just look, you know, just have that, that smile that doesn't have, you right. know, that doesn't have anything like missing it from it or to, having uh, it. You know, it lends, but it's also the compounding, right? right? Like if you are, you know, struggling to already make ends meet and you're struggling to get a promotion because they really want to put you at front desk, but like there's just something holding them back and you and you think it's this. They're, this is These are a lot of people. Like I've heard a lot of these stories of like, I just wish I could get this fixed, but I can't. It's $4,000. I don't have that money. And that's like a real huge concern to people that it just shouldn't be because we do have the infrastructure we wouldn't have to build anything we would just have to change you know the way that we account for it right because we are still paying for it right. as a society it's not like dentists are going unpaid right now or they would be going unpaid we would just be figuring out a way to make sure that it's not like I right now I don't have uh, any kind of dental uh, insurance mm -hmm. and I am terrified of riding on my bicycle and going over my Dude. handlebars right yeah I mean I'm sorry to hear that yeah and, and didn't you also get renovated <laughs> and that happened yeah that was um, so my apartment building that I loved and it's just my beautiful house was um, I found out in summer last summer that it was being sold in December and just wait till December. Oh, wow. We don't know the plan. Wait till December. December comes. I get uh, Christmas Eve. I get my renovation sent to me. Yes, and um, I fought it for like you know a week, but I was with my parents in Ottawa. I had just done lockdown by myself, and I didn't want to be alone. And I didn't want to um, you know. So I just kind of put my stuff in storage you know went mm -hmm. back to my parents house for three months and just kind of licked my wounds and looked for a new place found a new place okay. very lucky very yeah. happy found an amazing place but it was it was terrifying looking at those listings it was terrifying just seeing what was available how not how, affordable, it, not affordable. I couldn't afford anything the idea of like an extra five or six hundred dollars a month like it's just impossible I was I was thinking maybe I would have to stay with you know my parents longer until I actually lucked into an affordable apartment mm -hmm. and it should never be like that I had a friend who had a friend like it should never have to be like that to be able to get a place and um, just working within uh, you know even the in the, the system that tenants have to deal with with the province right. I got no help um, so I, you, you mentioned know? the province, and it's technically you know one of the, the, the provincial uh, yeah. under the provincial purview. But I get the sense that as a as a, as a federal representative for your center, that you would advocate on this. Issue. Well, I think that I mean parts of housing are a federal or are, are a provincial purview, but affordable housing used to be funded on a national level until the 90s. So we just kind of decide what is and isn't purview based on who kind of wants to be responsible and accountable for things. Right. Um, I think that what we need to do as a society is decide that housing is a right. Once we come mm. together and understand housing as a right, you won't really think that a right is only the provincial government, right? You won't only think it's a municipal issue. You'll know that they have to come together to work on it. And I think that's how I look at it. Like, whoever does the administration of the program is all kind of things that you work out, but it's a right and we all need to come together to ensure that it happens. So all partners need to be a part of that. So yeah, I don't really, you know, I don't think that there's anything that a federal, like an MP, shouldn't be talking about. I think it's all that government needs to be working together. And I ran for regional council um, because I like the macro view regional council had, kind of over systems versus the city council view, which is, um, um, you know, more more localized in in the community. Mm -hmm. But eat, like, but there's no real different because difference because the way the community feeds into, you know, a park or a trail or the way that public transport is kind of um, built and you know where are we putting houses? Are we making them walkable? Mm -hmm. All all levels need to be on the same page about these things because you you know you can't have both hands having different conversations they really need to be working together right. so there really is no I mean there's a difference of course you know in in the work but 
I really feel like the principles um, are the same for me, no matter what level you're on. It's really about you know ensuring rights, making sure that um, you're meeting people where they are, and that people are. Um, when you're building a policy, you're thinking about vulnerable people and how they're going to be impacted by that policy. Because if you are creating that that strong foundation, mm -hmm. then you know uh, people will like that that. Comfort will grow up, right? I think we kind of think about trickle down economic, and that never made sense because right. it would never Top get up. Policies. But if you put enough down, like you would have to put a lot on the bottom to make it go all the way up, right? right. To, to combat gravity, right? So that to me makes sure that the people who need the most aren't the ones who are just getting right. the very bottom of the trickle and just trickling along, and we're really just. We're we're investing and we're creating a foundation mm -hmm. to acknowledge that we are only as strong as the most vulnerable person in our community. Well said. You know? You've you created a foundation here in, in Kitchener Center for yourself. And, and I remember, just before we sort of went on the tangents yeah. about the uh, <laughs> global mining industry and such, I was asking you about uh, you know, the fact that you went from Ottawa, Montreal, and Toronto, and you're here uh, with this Communitech, CG, uh, what is it about uh, Kitchener Center that we're so fortunate to have you here that, that you decided to? Stay I feel like I'm roots? I'm fortunate. I love okay. I love how we we don't seem like a small place, even though it is the smallest place that I you know a number yeah. like population wise, yeah. like the population here is smaller, but it doesn't feel small. It feels as vibrant, as busy. There's as many different places for me to discover. I can feel anonymous when I need to. It has that 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 quality to it that I think that you need to have come from maybe a bigger city to to appreciate. But I do think it like matches the big city kind of needs in terms of the food I like. You know, like trying out just different kinds of um, cuisine and ethnicity. So. All that big city stuff is there, so I don't, I don't, I don't love the like, you know, the smaller city um, frame. But it, but I do think, and I've never lived in like a really small kind of place. But I do think what's unique about here is just the people that want. It's hard to meet people in Toronto. It's hard to meet people in other places. But here, once you start meeting people, once you start building a community, it just kind of follows, and more people kind of people hear about you and they want to they want to meet you and they're excited and so it's a very welcoming and a very um connected place in that way and then i just think the last thing is i think this is a place that's ready for change and i'm excited to be here in this moment after what we've seen over the last year after having that experience of, of that black lives matter march just kind of walking up what, past my workplace and past these you know um these these places that I didn't necessarily look at as connected to political life and political change until mm -hmm. those moments and I realized um, looking around and seeing people who I don't I, I think for a lot of people that might have been their first really big protest here and watching them just like have that moment and take it and show numbers and strength yeah. and, and, and know what to do almost instinctively. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I, it was, it showed me a lot of, it was magical in terms of the energy and the solidarity, but I think it also showed me the potential there for that to grow, right. for that kind of feeling and that moment to right. not just be in that moment, but to really keep growing and keep kind of coming. So it's, it's, we, when we see everything that we are currently grappling with, you know, as a society, it hasn't stopped. Nothing has slowed down. We haven't gotten a moment to catch our breath. And I think if we're waiting for that moment to catch our breath, we might not get it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yep, I, I agree. I think that what we saw with the march and and ongoing community conversations that people, uh, the people themselves, the people do want change they want. And, and they're, they're calling for change. So I'm glad that you're answering that call. Well, I mean, again, I can answer the call. I need to do the work. I need to actually show the change, and I need to kind of um, keep listening and keep kind of meeting and, and understanding more. I want to 
do that work. I want to be part of that change. I'm not satisfied with the way the system is right now. And so I think that's really what I'm offering people is that I hope you sense in me my, my like impatience for this to no longer be the situation anymore. Yeah. Um, because I, I want to I want to find other impatient people you know what I mean that's what this is for that's what I'm launching for so that I can tell everybody I'm impatient and I can tell and if you're also impatient yeah. we have these ways for you to also kind of right. help us and, and be a part of this and, and help us that? build that. How, how can people like join your campaign I mean like we right now I I, I say I keep saying we and I hate you saying we usually because usually it's the royal we oh. no there's 20 of us okay. there's li there's a group of people who it's way bigger than me, and it's. Ooh. Oh, it's probably still recording. Yeah. No? Let's keep going. I don't know when that happened, though. But it's fine. We also have oh, yeah. literally two mics. This is literally why they did that. Um, there's only 20 of you. There's, there's what? 20 of us, but what we're doing right now is we're creating the capacity for training. So we, we couldn't just have people join in and not be able to accom like to actually give them things to do. So we've been spending the last couple of months actually creating, we have our internal communications channels, we have our content plan, we have all of that stuff actually built together, right. which is a lot of work and a lot of kind of behind the scenes work. Yeah. Um, you know, we have our schedule, I have, you know, we've, we've built a campaign for people to join. Bravo. So not to build, but like to join yes. and to kind of yes. get, you know get from yeah. um, and to grow with. And so yeah, I, I from my kind of social responsibility background, yeah, we have a social responsibility pledge as a camp as a campaign, and we have an ethical purchasing like guide. We are a no Amazon, no PayPal uh, organization. Okay. Um, we are also, we have like volunteer training, we have uh, bystander intervention training offered by the Sexual Assault Support Center. Oh, wow. We have um, uh, different kinds of canvas trainings, different types of kind of on your own type of, you know, resource libraries, an anti-harassment policy, all of that stuff built so that volunteers can be, um, can be brought on in a way that um, is respectful of their time and respectful of what they want to kind of do do in this in this moment. Okay. Um, and we also have 10% of our funds raised are going towards accessibility, so making sure that both in our internal but as well as our external outreach. So making sure that we have um, you know interpreters or sign language interpreters or translations if needed, Braille, um, depending on the situation. That that's always in the budget. Okay. And that we also have 10% for. Um, people who want to volunteer, people who would really like to get political experience but can't make it work because they have two jobs that they're working and they just really need to make ends meet. So um, we have paid shifts that you can also access um, okay. and that will be part of our growth. So you know that if you're even donating $20 to our campaign, you know, two bucks is gonna go towards accessibility and two bucks is gonna go towards, you know, making sure that somebody gets a living wage um, um, while they're being I a part wanna, of this. I just want to make sure because so you're saying that even there are certain volunteers under certain circumstances where there are actually you will actually pay your volunteers yes. under, the, under the right circumstances. Acknowledging the fact that not everyone can simply volunteer. Them. Not everyone volunteering is classist. The it's a it's a um, it's a wonderful opportunity, um, but it is a privilege. So uh, making sure that that privilege is not a barrier to your political participation in this crucial moment that we're living in yeah. makes sense to me and uh, it just makes sense to me as like the kind of and maybe we'll, we won't need the full maybe we'll need to even you know revisit right I don't know yet but we I just didn't want it to be that oh that would be great I would love to but I have to work you know shifts all this and I can't afford to take a Saturday off and knock on that's, doors that's real it is real it's yeah. totally real and it's legitimate yep. and that and if that's like your answer if you want to if you want to learn what that looks like if you think political organizing is a skill that will take you you know what will help you in life mm -hmm. Come, I mean, we need to make room for you. So I'm hoping, you know, I'm hoping that also, you know, encourages people to you know, donate too yes, and to be sure. a part of, of what we're trying to build because we're trying to create that space through our donors um, into the community and, right. and kind of just 
you know, oh, we have a buy local policy, so everything yeah. is going to be. We can get things like election signs cheaper if we go through the central um, ordering, and we said we're not doing that. Um, we are going to find a local, you know, a local printer, and we're going to just keep it all all in Kitchener Center. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing. It's important. It I mean, is important. And also, I'm a social responsibility consultant. I. I would be just such a hypocrite if this wasn't at least something that I focused on building. Right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Anything else you want to say to the people? No, thank you. Yeah? Thank you for, and I just wanted to say thank you to the Danes Market. Oh, for sure. Yeah, uh, for just providing us. Danes Market. Uh, it's a flower shop and more? It's a florist and they get, florist. you know, from all over kind of Ontario and they do weekly quite pop-ups at the Pyrus uh, outpost oh, out, out okay. on the trail. You're identifying these pieces in there. Is that a um, fiddle leaf, I think? Yeah, fiddle leaf fig. It's maybe it's a ficus a fern, though. That's a fern. That. I, there was two and I was like, maybe. <laughs> no, no. So as you can see, technical difficulties follow me around, but Aaron was just such a great sport and we had such a great conversation. Um, if you want to watch that whole video, we will have it, as we said, with accessibility included. So there will be closed captioning and different volume um, uh, uh, options that you can kind of uh, have yourself. But because of Zoom, we are limited to the same sound deck and volume level for everybody. Um, does Aaron want to come back and just have maybe a couple words and, and, and chat a little bit more um, before we, uh, you know, wrap up uh, the get to know me part and then we get to know our team? Yeah, I'm right here. Uh, yeah. it, was, it was fun to watch the video. Yeah. But you know, you know Bizan, we were talking about some interesting stuff before the break, too. We so. were. We were. Be, it was it sad. Was... Yeah, it was sad that, like, we had to pick the first or the second half. Uh, and so I just kind of mm -hmm. went with the second half. But we did. We talked a lot about foreign policy, which we didn't really get to, you know, talk to in the second half. Right. And, you know, I can remember almost how we got in that foreign policy conversation because we were talking about the intersectionality of, of Canada's uh, environmental policies and and it's Canada's sort of role in the world and how it re would reflect ultimately Canada's um, at Canada at home domestically, right? Yeah, uh, especially, especially with the, with Indigenous peoples. Yeah, well, I mean, we talked. Yeah, we definitely talked about how like they are interconnected. And when we are talking about Canadian foreign policy, you know, we were talking about how when we were, when I was younger, at least, that Canadian badge, that flag on your on your knapsack meant something. Um, I think we had the idea that it would open doors in like foreign lands, and then um, and then that was not the case. And then after like a Harper government, and then after kind of subsequent um, you know foreign interventions like the Afghanistan war that really did harm to our kind of national uh, reputation. Um, right now we're in a situation where uh, really like um, mining companies, foreign multinationals that are Canadian are the ones who are doing the most foreign kind of reputational work for Canada. And, and, and this is really why it's important for us when we're talking about environmental policy to actually talk about how corporations fit into that because we can be talking about meeting all of our greenhouse emission targets and do all that but as you know as as Canadian companies are all over the world and and um, adding to more inequality and and adding to the impacts of climate inequality by um, creating more um, insecurity and, um, you know, not creating good jobs, not creating actual real kind of, um, you know, development in, in any of these places, we're complicit on that level as well. So I think when we kind of got into talking about how um, Canadian colonialism relates to other sorts of colonialisms. Um, we got into the intersectionality of of all of these kinds of, of systems of oppression and how they they work together and how we have to look at them together. You know, it was a really good chat. We'll find a way to make it. You know, we'll try, find a way to make it all public because it just. Uh, it, it, it was great. Um, there was also something else that we managed to talk about a little bit, which was um, that you didn't know about my political history as well. 
Right. Yeah. The, the fact that we were going over your educational history and your political history and your first job right out of uh, undergrad, I believe, yeah. uh, was with Mr. Jack Layton. It was. And I have my little, my Jack Layton tour bus. I don't know if you can kind of see it over my shoulder. It's one of my favorite mementos. Um, but we were chatting about how um, yeah, I was 25, my first uh, job on Parliament Hill, working in the war room, as they call political kind of HQs in Ottawa. And um, it was just such an experience, I think, to be so young and to be kind of given that lens, that view of Canadian politics in that way. I did luck into it. I was young. I spoke French. Um, you know, I, I had really good kind of uh, internet research skills, which they were very much looking for as like a recent graduate. And, right. and that kind of fell into place. But all of that really allowed me to, I mean, I have legislative experience. I was able to kind of, I led committee dissenting reports on the legacy fund, the G8 mm -hmm. infrastructure spending amounts. Like I worked with Charlie Angus on a lot of the Attawapiskat um, work that he was doing while he was there. And it really did kind of shape me at a really young age. So even though I haven't necessarily worked in partisan politics, sometimes people who know me from KW are surprised because they don't know me in that context. They don't know me from an auto person. They know me um, as like a nonprofit tech, you know, kind of person here. Um, I, I really was lucky to have just that 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 experience. And um, it really did shape, though, I think, why I want to go back to Parliament Hill. Um, and cool. what, you know, what's in it for the, you know, what's in it for me beyond just obviously the, the systemic change is going back to this place that wasn't very friendly to a 25 year old woman. Like it really wasn't a safe space for me, um, mm. you know, and the sexual harassment and the gender kind of toxicity on Parliament Hill is major. It's major. Yeah. And just going back and knowing that, um, you know, I was once in a position of no power and a position of being kind of um, very, very vulnerable in this space, going back with the position to actually change things and make things better and make things different and, um, you know, change the culture and, and hold people accountable. And some of the same people are still there. You know what I mean? It's not like there's been in the last decade, this whole turnover, you know? And so I, yep. and so that is another element of it too. Of course, I want to um, do everything else but i it, it, it there is a sentimental kind of meaning to me after what i saw and after kind of what we uh, what young women on the hill have to go through to actually be able to have a concrete kind of role in changing that and in, in making that better is i mean it's very meaningful for me it's very it's, it's yeah brilliant brilliant well we are so happy to have you here in kitchener center Thank you. And, um, I mean, honestly, I feel very, very fortunate to be a resident of this town, of this, of this, and, and of the riding. So, you know, I'm, a, I'm, I'm of the riding. Um, <laughs> I, I, I will be <laughs> approaching you for, uh, for your support. Don't you worry. Cool deal. Cool deal. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, this is a great chat as always. I really appreciate you taking the time twice today. Yeah, to I'm right here. I'll be hanging out. Thank you cool. so much. Thank you. Um, so for the next little bit, we are going to just tell you a little bit just about our plans, what we have been working on. I'm going to uh, introduce some people from our team that you can see them and, and, and um, you know, we can wave at you. We can kind of uh, bring us all together and then and then we'll let you. Yes, we'll let you go right on time at seven, even before. Um, so. With this launch event, what we're really kind of hoping to do is begin our listening tour. Um, the reason why we're starting with a listening tour is because the last year and a half has been really hard on a lot of people, and we don't know we don't know exactly how. We know what we've kind of experienced, but we know we haven't all been in the same boat, um, and we know that you, between mental health, between people's works, between their families, between, um, you know, all of those kinds of elements, their, their, their parents, their children, um, there's a lot there. And so I am just devoting as much time as I can. We don't know when there will be an election, but it's really important to me to start off with listening. So we have listening tour sessions uh, planned for every 
Wednesday and Thursday in July, starting on the 7th and then going forward. And so we kind of broken them down to be just a bit more targeted. So it's not just every issue and we can kind of um, mold them. So for the first four big issue themed listening sessions, we will be talking about affordable housing. Uh, Aaron and I chatted about my rent eviction. It's obviously, I mean, but even when I ran for regional council, it was a really big um, policy concern and it's only gotten into even a bigger crisis situation. So affordable housing, Healthcare. We heard we touched on that a little bit, um, but just complete universal healthcare with with mental health, vision, dental, long term care, all included. Um, we're going to talk about youth and the future. It's so important, and youth always get left out of these discussions, and it should never be the case. So we're going to talk about where we're going and how we can build a movement and solidarity towards like a system change that goes beyond words. And, and, and pretty words and goes is into actually transforming our institutions and transforming the way we do things. And then the final thing we're gonna talk about um, in July is gonna be an equitable recovery. So what does it mean to move forward from this moment? Um, for small businesses, how do we um, make sure that we aren't just, um, you know, padding these large corporate uh, bank accounts and that we're actually promoting small local businesses, our neighbors, um, our, our friends, our colleagues that are that are that are starting here locally in in KW. So those are really big issues to me, and I'm really excited to kind of have everybody come in um, during the lunch hour, uh, the lunchtime hours for the live sessions. But also, we will be receiving feedback um, a number of ways, uh, and so all of those are detailed on bsanzubi.ca slash listening tour and uh, you can get all those dates you can register you can get updates um, for the zoom links uh, or or um, uh, whatever it is uh, that you want to get in touch so that's the listening tour um, and then the other thing that we're really excited um, to talk about sorry I'm just the notifications uh, we're on our phone and uh, still no power I kind of thought by the end of this we would be up and running again but we are not <laughs> um, yeah, so the listening tour is going to be one big part of it. But then the second part is that we are announcing um, our social responsibility pledge. Um, as a social responsibility consultant, it's obviously important for me to walk the talk. But, um, you know, like we were just chatting with Aaron, like when I go back to Parliament Hill, it won't be to um, replicate the same systems that I've seen cause harm and I've seen cause damage. We really need to create the foundation of social responsibility. I want to create a campaign that's in and of itself the purpose and the goal of changing the way political campaigns are done. And then we can focus on changing the way politics are done after the campaign is over. Um, so to do that, we have the social responsibility pledge. We have a buy local policy. We have an ethical sourcing policy. We have an anti-harassment policy. Um, we are following all the COVID protocols. We have an accessibility and a living wage fund. Um, and we just have a really great group of people who are so excited and <laughs> they are so patient with me. And I am very, very grateful that they are not involved in this project because of just me, because I think at this point, some of them might have, you know, moved on to other things because it's hard building all of this, you know, from the ground and they have been there um, and there's, there's, there's quite a few of them. And I think we have um, uh, quite a few of them, maybe six or seven of you on the call. So I was wondering if we could invite um, invite uh, some of our volunteers onto this call to wave, introduce themselves, um, especially if Stacy is here because Stacy Sage is our volunteer manager. Stacy, I'm here. Hello. Oh. <laughs> I have power in downtown Kitchener, luckily. Oh, glad that worked out. Yes, yes. Um, so I'm not going to take too long and I've wrote a little bit here. So I'll probably just read it quick just because you know how I am. Um, so thank you everyone for being here with us tonight. Really appreciate it. Uh, we hope that you feel inspired to join our team and do want to remind you that we are dedicated to creating a collaborative, empowering and supportive space for you to dive into the world of federal politics. Um, let's show Canada how ready for change Kitchener Centre is and drive that change together. 
Um, there are several ways for you to get involved and we want to work with all of our volunteers to make this experience exciting and enjoyable for anyone who joins our team. Um, so if you're interested in coming on board, visit um, bzanzubi.ca, click get in touch, then click join our team. Um, once you sign up, we'll share all kinds of resources, including our social responsibility pledge. We'll invite you to our Slack community, and then we'll work with you to fit you into a role that energizes you most. Um, just one more time, here's that website, bzanzubi.ca. Click on that get in touch button and then join our team. And we look forward to having you on board. Thanks so much. Thank you so much, Stacey. Um, Stacey is just wonderful and has been, we have been kind of working out exactly how we can onboard people in a way that is super co like conscientious of their time and their kind of investment that they're making in our campaign. So we have a whole beautiful volunteer resource library and onboarding area and Slack community. Um, and and Stacy here to walk you and guide you through everything to make sure that you know you you understand and 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 you know you're being brought along on this process. So it's really exciting. Thank you, Stacy. So we, let me just check this. This is it's six fifty. Um, I wanted to thank you, Stacy. I wanted to just take a break and see. Do we have anything from the Q&A that we uh, can address? Is there any other final questions or anything else uh, from the audience uh, that we can answer? I'm just gonna give just one or two seconds to see if anything kind of comes in on my, on my screen. Okay, if you need anything, uh, you can email the campaign. You can email me. Um, if you want to email just the general cam uh, campaign, it's info at bsanzubi.ca. Uh, we'll be able to kind of assign your question to anybody. And if you want to get in touch with me, it's bsan at bsanzubi.ca. So we kept it simple. Uh, Stacy is volunteers at bsanzubi.ca. Uh, if you want to join our communications outreach or operations team, that's communications at, operations at, and outreach at. And um, we will, we were so excited to meet you. We we're so excited to uh, uh, grow and learn and kind of make these processes better. And, and, and yeah, so thank you all so much for joining us tonight, this evening. Um, if you have power, I hope you keep it. And um, I hope I get mine back. Uh, but uh, in, in the meantime, just thank you all. Thank you so much to the team. Thank you to Jean-Luc, our communication, or sorry, our um, operations chair who uh, made this feed run so smoothly for you this evening, but everybody on the team um, is just so wonderful. So thank you and let's do this. Let's get to work. I'm so excited. I'm so honored for this opportunity, but I, even without power, even sweating through this dress, this launch needed to happen because this is just one step towards getting the this job, this real big amount of work and, and this big job ahead of us started and done. So thank you, Godspeed, and, and I'll see you soon.